Hello, my name is Stephen Shirley and I'm a physics student at the University of Texas at Austin. Today in this video, I'm going to present information about the two nuclear fuel cycles, compare and contrast the pros and cons of each, especially with regards to non-proliferation, provide the choice of fuel cycle that countries have chosen and reasons for their choice. First, let's take a look at the open fuel cycle. Here we have a flow diagram of the open fuel cycle. First, natural uranium is mined and converted into yellow cake which is then turned into uranium hexafluoride gas so that it can be enriched. From enrichment, the uranium is converted into uranium oxide and converted into fuel fabrication, which then can be used in a reactor. Reactors such as in the US use uranium enrichment that is from 3 to 5%. Research reactors usually use enrichments up to 20% as because anything above 20% is considered highly enriched uranium. After the fuel has been irradiated in the reactors, then it is kept on site in cooling storage tanks as the fuel is still very highly radioactive. The key in part to the open fuel cycle is here in the enrichment. The only place on here where weapons grade uranium can be made is at the enrichment plants. But this is not really a big problem in the open fuel cycle as enrichment plants are very large and any non-state actors don't have the capabilities to have enrichment plants and any state actors, it's very hard to, to hide buildings that are the size of football fields without anyone noticing. So as far as non-proliferation goes, the open fuel cycle is very safe. Next, we'll talk about the closed fuel cycle. Here is a flow chart of the closed fuel cycle. It is very similar to the open fuel cycle, except for after the fuel has been irradiated in a nuclear power plant, the spent fuel is sent to a reprocessing plant where the uranium and plutonium are separated. This adds a proliferation risk because this plutonium that is separated out and sent to, back to the fuel fabrication plant can be used directly to create a nuclear weapon. This is, this is a risk because non-state actors can steal this plutonium either en route to the fuel fabrication plant or at the fuel fabrication plant. So unlike the open fuel cycle where there wasn't a threat of non-state actors, the closed fuel cycle does add that threat. Next, I will discuss countries that are using the open fuel cycle and why they've decided to make that choice. Currently, countries like Canada, the Czech Republic, the United States, Finland, South Korea, and Sweden all utilize the open fuel cycle. Some general reasons for this is that uranium mining is much cheaper than reprocessing, uranium is much more abundant than previously thought, and most importantly is that the open fuel cycle is more proliferation resistant than the closed, as shown earlier. For instance, the U.S. once backed reprocessing of spent fuel up until 1974 when India had a nuclear test. In 76, President Ford had a deferral of all commercial reprocessing, which was then extended indefinitely by President Carter in 1977. This was done because it was easily seen that the open fuel cycle is much safer than the, than the closed fuel cycle. Next, we'll look at countries that use the closed fuel cycle and some reasonings for why they do that. Some countries which use a closed fuel cycle and reprocess include France, the UK, Japan, Russia, and China. General reasons countries choose the, this path are that reprocessing reduces waste, which is a problem for the open fuel cycle in that there is no general consensus for long-term geological repository, and the open fuel cycle has more waste. The closed cycle also shortens the lifetime of the radioactive isotopes in spent fuel and helps conserve the world's uranium supply through more efficient use. Specific examples of countries using the closed fuel cycle are France. While mining natural uranium is cheaper than a repository, countries like France make money on reprocessing spent fuel from countries that send it to them and pay them to reprocess it for them, such as the Netherlands and Germany. And also you have another country like Japan. They reprocess because they don't have natural uranium mines, and so they would like to have energy independence and not, de not depend on buying their uranium from other sources. As we've seen today, the open and closed fuel cycles are similar and do have their own pros and cons. But in light of recent events, such as the attacks on 9-11 and the Boston Marathon bombing, it is clear that security of the general public should be held paramount. Should a nuclear device have been used in these attacks, the effects and loss of life would have been devastating. It is essential that we minimize as much as possible the risk of nuclear weapons being used in such a scenario. Currently, the open fuel cycle is the most proliferation resistant method which is known today, which is why the U.S. is currently employing it and trying to make it become a norm in the international community. So please, spread the word. The open fuel cycle is the way to go. 
This video is brought to you part by Jay Joshi. There are lots of information in this video, right? I hope you learned something. Mark Stewart. Suddenly we're done, right? <laughs> I guess. Nice.